Now, the Trump spectacle, it continues as the former president holds a campaign-style rally in Mar-a-Lago, taking aim at his criticizers, as well just hours after being charged in a historic indictment. And joining us live now with reaction is Lanny Davis, the lawyer and attorney for former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. Uh, Lanny, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tammy. May I just do a 10 seconds personal um, statement about how much I love Canada and how, as a teenager, I fell in love with a Montreal girl. So I just want to say hello, Canada. Okay, hello, Canada, and hello to that uh, Montreal lady. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, we'll start off with uh, yesterday. You know, I, first off, I want to kind of clarify as well. So being Michael Cohen's lawyer and having your client be a witness as part of this indictment uh, you know, I may ask you a question that you can't speak. Have you been cautioned or being told that you're limited on what you have to say when it comes to this indictment? I was cautioned yesterday, at least I interpreted it as a caution to applicable to me by the judge in the case where he asked Mr. Trump and everyone, including my client, Mr. Cohen, and I take that to be me as well since I represent him, be very cautious about commenting on this case. So I will be very cautious with you, but I can comment on what I know about the case. I can comment on what I think is serious crime evidence here. And I'll explain to your viewers why the nonsense in the political arena, and sometimes both sides are, result, are capable of that, uh, should be ignored because the actual case is a very serious crime, if it's proved in court. Now, there has been criticism of the indictment not having enough detail, not being specific as to what exactly the alleged crime is where it comes to hiding these uh, this alleged business fraud that's been happening and hiding these alleged hush money payments. So um, what do you think of the details or lack of details in this indictment? But, uh, what I think is that we're now in a court of law. We're not trying to please, with all due respect, people in your profession or me or anybody else. We have an indictment that lays out serious crimes and doesn't lay everything out. That's very normal. Uh, most prosecutors don't want to tell everything they have. Most people who in court, when I file a complaint, I withhold and don't tell everything. But it's not up to us. Who cares what we say? It's up to 12 people in a jury when they hear the evidence. So this is all media and political reaction, which is quite legitimate. Of course, we like to know everything. This prosecutor has laid out in this indictment and factual statement, a very serious crime. And I can tell you, being in the room, and no more than that, this is a, an indictment backed up by substantial witness testimony, documents, emails, text messages, even telephone records. This is a very substantial case, and it's going to be up to 12 jurors to decide whether Donald Trump has been able to deprive them of a verdict which is guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, your client, Michael Cohen, um, has already been penalized in connection to these hush money payments made to Stormy Daniels. Can you tell us a little bit about his reaction to the indictment, even last week when uh, it was made official and this historic move was made? Well, Tammy, of all comments, I, I hope everyone focuses on your question, which is we've heard lawyers say that this would never have happened if it weren't an ex-president of the United States. It's actually in reverse. A double standard was applied when Michael Cohn, according to federal prosecutors, was directed, that's their word, in public, by individual one, which was immediately identified as Donald Trump right before he was elected president, directed him to pay the hush money. As a result of his payment of the hush money from his own funds, on behalf of, for the benefit of Donald Trump, he didn't have the alleged affair, uh, he spent the hush money at the direction, according to federal prosecutors. He then went to jail for that crime. Now, all of a sudden, Mr. Trump, who, as ex-president, is supposedly subject to the same set of laws under equal justice under the law, is now arguing he shouldn't be subjected to the same charge as Michael Cohn did at his behest for his benefit. So that is a double standard. And what I am so satisfied about is that this indictment shows that no one is above the law. And Michael Cohen, having served his time, is now a principal witness as to why the man that directed him to do it for his benefit, to keep this information from the American people before the election, which is what makes it a serious crime, 
is, and now at least Michael Cohen, has the satisfaction of knowing that there's equal justice under the law. Now he respects the process, and Mr. Trump is entitled to the presumption of innocence. And I can tell you that Michael and I, working with him, are very proud that at least we have the principle of equal justice under the law as to the indictment. Now Mr. Trump's entitled to the presumption of innocence. Uh, last night, it was just hours after he appeared in court in New York. Uh, former President Donald Trump was in Mar-a-Lago uh, performing this uh, rally-like speech to some supporters. Did you watch that, and what were your thoughts? I, I watched myself about half an hour of it, and uh, it was a long list of grievances, it seemed like, that were being aired out there. I must admit, I can only tolerate a certain amount of the Donald Trump Act but we're so familiar with that act, we can't be shocked anymore. The norms don't apply. He's un mentally unhinged to me, with all respect. Uh, and so all I can say is what the defense attorney said after the indictment is that this man would not be indicted if he weren't the former president of the United States. Let's reverse that. No American citizen attacking a judge and his wife, attacking people's family, involved in the criminal justice system like Mr. Bragg, being on social media with a bat threatening violence to a prosecutor. No American citizen would get away with that. A judge would probably hold them in contempt. After the warning yesterday, Mr. Trump risks being held in contempt. If it were my client, I would say to my client, you may be going to jail. You just were given a soft suggestion by the judge, by the judge and a warning, don't do this, and he went ahead and did it. So the double standard is unfortunately still with us but we still are very happy that the principle of accountability and a single standard was established thanks to a lot of work by these prosecutors when the indictment was handed down. Now Mr. Trump may face the, the legal consequence like any other American citizen for what he did last night. Lenny Davis, thank you so much once again for joining us this thank morning. You, we appreciate you taking the time to be here. Please invite me back, especially because I love Canada so much. <laughs> All right. It's a deal. Thanks very thank much. Thank you.